Dragon Ball Super Manga Chapter 91. Boo! You stink! Oh, well, okay then. Well, uh, let, let's just get into it. Damn! What's going on, guys? All jokes aside, you boys back in for another, uh, dare I say, banger chapter of Dragon Ball Super. But, I mean, it is what it is. I do like the color page. That's something, right? New chapter. We're still in the superhero manga arc. I do want to say that being that I'm probably one of the only people that enjoyed the first three chapters of this little mini movie arc, if you will, for, you know, the, the obvious reasons, all the superhero stuff, like I've said in previous reactions, if you've missed out on those, please go ahead and check them out. The one thing that I do want to just ask this question, and I don't really expect an actual answer because I just... At this point, it's just like Toei's just going to do whatever they're going to do. And that's just that. But like, if they're doing all of this manga for this movie that came out, why didn't they do it for Broly? I'm just saying. I'm just saying. But either way, let's just get into this chapter. Yeah, that, that color page does look nice, though. I mean, it, it looks really nice. It's, it's very colorful. It's bright. All right. Boom. <clears throat> all right. So Piccolo. I guess he's waiting for to he's waiting to pick up Pan. So they definitely mentioned this in the movie. I do remember that he's already done this several times. See you tomorrow, teacher, daddy. Oh, and then he's like, oh, Piccolo, hi, Pan. I'm picking you up today. Piccolo says, hmm, where's mommy and daddy? Piccolo's like, they are apparently preoccupied. What kind of parents don't make their kid their top priority? It's disrespect. It's disgraceful. Um, Pan says, that's okay. I'm always glad to see you. Hmm. Piccolo smiles. Of course, because little baby Pan is always adorable. Gotta give shoutouts, right? So teacher says, bye-bye. Piccolo says, well, what now? We still have some time to kill. Piccolo says, you could visit my place. And Pan's like, oh, yeah, let's go. So they go to Piccolo's house. And she's, like, training outside already. And she's like, evil's gonna be mopped up. Say it, man, is here. Yeah. Okay. Look. She was holding up the three. I'm just... Listen, I don't make the rules. She is expecting to be Saiyan Man X3. Confirmed. All right, I don't, I don't make the rules. And then Piccolo says, Saiyan Man, explain. Then Pan's like, the superheroes who Goten and Trunks turn into. That's their name. And, oh, wow, even she knew. And then uh, Piccolo's like, playing hero, are they? There was a time when Gohan was into that. <laughs> And Piccolo's like, I'll never understand Saiyans. And then but, uh, Pan, I almost called her Videl. Pan says, but then they weren't studying enough. And so then they weren't allowed to be heroes anymore. And then, uh, okay, so this is obviously, it takes place after. Okay, before, okay, no. And then Pan said, uh, Grandma got so angry, it was crazy. Oh, yeah. So it looked, it, okay, so it seems like they got, they got busted. <laughs> and Chi Chi found out. And... We know how that goes. Piccolo said, Chi-Chi did. So she's still one of those helicopter moms. And Pan's like, I want to try all that too. Like being a superhero. And she's like doing what frogs do. I guess she's like copying with the frogs, like boing boing, you know. Piccolo's like, don't run too close to the cliff. And of course, she falls off trying to chase the frog off the damn cliff. Piccolo's like, hey. And he like rushes over. And Pan's like, look, I got the froggy. So she caught the frog. But she also caught herself. She broke her fall off of like a little tree limb. Piccolo's like, phew, she really scared me. She whipped right back up. And he's like, you're pretty fearless, Pan. Piccolo's like, do you want to be a superhero that badly? Why not let me train you? Pan's like, whoa, you mean it? And then Piccolo's like, your father was around your age when I started teaching him how to fight. You might as well begin sooner than later. She's like, yay. And then Piccolo like starts taking off his John, right? And then he goes, I'll mold you into the perfect little demon. <laughs> I like that. That's a little. That's a, that's, a, that's a nod to himself. I feel like. And she hops on his on his uh, back, and she's like, "Yay, yay!" And she, wow, she takes his antennae and she freaking pulls it like he's a damn horse. And she's like, "Fun, fun!" And he's like, "Hey, don't grab those!" And then she's like, "Yay, yay!" And he's like, "I said, knock that off, Pan." So then they go back to West Capitol Police Headquarters. So I'm sure we're gonna see Krillin here. The Red Ribbon Army was a diabolical paramilitary group that sought world domination. The world believed that the organization fizzled about 30 years ago, but the death of its first leader, Com uh, Commander Red Ribbon. Uh, however, we know that the commander's son, Magenta Ribbon, 
has been rebuilding the army. Isn't Magenta the president of Red Pharmaceuticals? Said one of the police officers and then the lady's like, yes, that's the public face of the operation, which likely provides funding for the army. And then she goes, they want the incarcerated Dr. Hito, the key to this revival effort. Another officer says, who is he exactly? And she's like, care to explain Officer Kuridin? Uh, Kuridin? Krillin. He goes, will do, ma'am. Hito, who holds both a PhD and an MD, is the grandson of Dr. Jiro, a scientist who once worked with the Red Ribbon Army. Okay, so check this out. This is the first time in the manga now where we are seeing Vomi or who we like to recognize as Android 21, as well as 16 as his original Gevo or Jivo name, because again, that is their son or one of their sons. And so then Krillin goes on to explain that Hito's father was Jiro's second son. But when Hito was only a child, both his parents died in an accident. The boy lived off his inheritance and proved to be a prodigy, earning his PhD at age 14. However, he couldn't quite cut it in any labs or research organizations due to his quirky personality. So he used what was left of his inheritance to continue his research on his own. So the police officer says, so why is the Red Ribbon Army so keen on bringing Hito into the fold? And so the lady says, Hito inherited data on a bioorganic weapon from his grandfather. The whole world will be in trouble if this weapon ever sees the light of day. Isn't that right, officer? And then Krillin says, yep, we have to put a stop to this plot. And Hito already admitted that he's memorized the data for this weapon. And then she goes, Hito has only three more months in prison. Make no mistake, the Red Ribbon Army will contact him the moment he's released. That's our chance to locate their base of operations and foil their ambitions. A chance we can't pass up. And they go, roger that. So now they're going to Red Pharmaceuticals. Oh, so, all right, so this is kind of neat, right? This is the kind of stuff that I do like seeing is that even though we've seen this in the movie, it's nice to see where like the overlapping is finally starting to take place, right? This page right here, which I will show y'all, y'all recognize this from the movie. You have to. There's no way you don't recognize it from the movie. You've not seen the movie. That's the only way you're not recognizing this, right? But this right here, straight up from the movie, Red, Red Pharmaceuticals, freaking, uh, what's his name? I always forget it when I'm on the spot, but he comes in and... Oh, it's Carmine. Give me good news, Carmine. Where are we on this Hito fella? So, yeah. So, that's... Yeah. That, that's basically where we're at now. Well, we've learned he's in prison at the moment. Well, we've learned he's in prison at the moment. He can't very well join us if he's in the clink. What the fuck is the clink? I've never heard that for a prison anyway. You do realize we need what he's got to rebuild, yeah? Yes, sir. I assure you, Commander Magenta, we will grab Hito three months from now when he gets out. That's what I like to hear. Don't screw this up, you hear me? My dear old pops couldn't see it through, but I'll make good on his dream to conquer the world. And those three months later, so they're they're getting onto it. They're moving right along. So this is gonna be pretty quick. Pacing's pacing's pretty good so far. We're not we're not even. This is a 50 page chapter. This is we're only on page like 13 right now. So Hito leaves. He hits his button, blows up the freaking prison, and then he now he getting picked up. Yup. We're, over, we're in the overlapping stuff right here. Magenta says, Dr. Hito, I presume. Been expecting you. You can call me. And he goes, Magenta, president of Red Pharmaceuticals. And he's like, you know me? How's that? And he's like, I looked you up. Come again? I spotted your driver when he was spying on me at the athletic ground. He seemed fishy, so I had him tailed. How? Come, Hachimaru. This is movie, straight movie, one-to-one -one right here. Magenta's like, what am I looking at here? And then does like a little zoom in. Meet my cyborg agent, a modified wasp. Hachimaru followed your driver up to your office and caught you two talking about me. The audio quality wasn't great, but I definitely heard something about the Red Ribbon Army. Now it's your turn to start explaining. Him and Jess is like, you're already that in the know, huh? And then he's like, fantastic, this will save us the preamble. But first, why don't you hop on in? So he invites me in the car. Well, I can definitely say I, I do like the, uh, the the pacing from the manga so far. I mean, usually manga is a little quicker anyway. So that's usually how it goes. So let me, let me not to get too excited. Krillin says, oh, so yo, and this is the thing, yo. Krillin was was watching the entire time. Oh, as at least in the manga version. Okay. So Hito got into Magenta's car just like we anticipated. Perfect follow them. All right. So they're on to the, so the police task force is on to it. Okay. So then she's so then their commander's like we're ready to mobilize once we know where their secret base is get us that location officer krillin so then krillin like pursues them oh and he hangs onto the car okay so he hands onto the side and then uh 
Magenta's like, my condolences regarding your granddad, Dr. Gero. And he was like, hmm, whatever. I was still a kid when he passed. I never met him. Don't even know how he died. Oh, damn, that's pretty crazy. And he says, you don't say. Well, losing him was a big blow to the operation. That android tech of his was pure genius. By the by, I hear that as his grandson, you're just as, shall we say, passionate about android research. Well, what do you say? Want to follow in your granddad's footsteps and work with us? And he's like, I get it. First came the genius Dr. Jero. So now you're after the mega genius Dr. Hito. And Krillin's like, what? And then he's like, you got that right. And Magenta's like, we can offer research funds, facilities, and 300 mil per Android to sweeten the pot. Oh, and then, okay, so in this version, he notices Krillin and his police he uh, he uh, helmet right here. Look, check this out. So he notices at the corner, you see that? He hits his thing, he goes beep beep, he's like, hmm, I don't know. And then he goes, my parents didn't think much of my grandfather and his work with the Red Room Army. Plus, you're still out to conquer the world. My goal is the very opposite. Wow, okay, so Hachimaru is the, is I guess the, is, I think, oh, no, let's see what happens. Cause I remember in the movie, they like, they were like, they like hit something or whatever. And like the car was like moving around, so. Krillin dodges Hachimaru. Hachimaru headbutts the car, and the whole the whole car gets like a bump. And Magenta looks back, and he's like confused, and he's like, and Hito's like, you see, I'm a fan of powerful, awesome superheroes. Magenta's like, yeah, yeah, I know you're one of those hero fanatics. But listen, my goal is to take down some dangerous folks, people who'd oppose us. We're out to make a peaceful world where we're in control. Not so different from superheroes, right? And then Hachimaru's still on the prowl, but Krillin. He's actually on the roof of the car, which is insane how they don't feel it. While they're, yo, that's so funny. While they're talking, Krillin is scrapping with this damn robotic ass bee. And then Hito's continuing saying, let me get this straight. You plan to take over the world by force and shape it according to your will just to attain wealth and power? That sort of authority doesn't pique my interest. Little does outside of my research. And then Magenta's like, still not convinced? How about a cool billion for each Android you make for us? And then he's like, an offer I can't refuse, is it? And then he goes, and then, oh, and then, my man pulls out that gat, yo. He said, bingo. And then Magenta's like, he like, he just put his hands on it. He's like, fine, if I must, says Hido. So then he says, to be clear, that firearm doesn't scare me. I've injected myself with a particular compound that makes my skin resistant to bullets. Furthermore, please don't forget about Hachimaru. One job from its toxic stinger will incapacitate a human or any remaining biological components of an android so then he goes toxic stinger and of course he starts he's trying to sting krillin oh krillin whips out the boom oh, <laughs> he whips out the freaking shit bang oh he actually shot him oh wow he actually shot hachimar okay so th so that was the bang that they heard so still it's all it's so interesting how like that it, it, we don't see krillin at all during this entire scene in the movie but they made it, they, 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 they pretty much like involved Krillin a lot more, which I appreciate. This is the part where Carmine is like, he swerves, he does that whole spin and they're like spinning in the car. And then he was like, I'm only cooperating because the considerable funding you're offering appeals to me. That will allow me to create history's greatest androids. Mind you, President Magenta, I have no interest in your lofty ambitions in and of themselves. And then he's like, fine by me. I finally get back on track. And Carmine's like, what in the world? And then Magenta's like, come on, where'd you learn to drive, Carmine? It's like, apologies, sir. And then Hito says, so who's the biggest obstacle in your path? And then Magenta says, the folks who took down Cell. He said, wasn't that Hercule? <laughs> nice. <laughs> says, not quite. He's involved for sure, but our investigation is focusing on one nasty cabal, a secret group all revolving around Bulma of Capsule Corporation. And he goes, Capsule Corporation? I have Bulma's son to thank for my stint in prison. So this is definitely some difference between manga and anime right here. There's a direct reference to Trunks in this car conversation. Magenta says, what a world. I'll skip to the point then. We're thinking these guys are extraterrestrials. What? Like aliens? I guess that explains how they fly around and such. They're using the resources of Capsule Corp to plan... Wait, why do they say to plan A to plan A? I don't know if that's a typo or what, but anyway. To plan A to plan a full-scale invasion of Earth. And then it says Majin Buu and King Piccolo are also a part of this cabal. And then, wow, her name is Sergeant Nuts. Krillin just says, Sergeant Nuts! Ah, <sighs> classic. I can confirm the Red Ribbon Army's goal. And I like how nuts is spelled with a Z. 
I hope her name, her first name is Dee's. That's all I gotta say. <laughs> I can confirm the Red Ribbon Army's goal and Hito's willing, willingness to aid them. And she says, well done, stay on them. Hito says, seems like a job for superheroes. So he hits this button and I guess Hachimaru wakes up and goes into like demon mode or something. So Magenta's like, so are you that sure you can whip up some androids that to beat these creeps? And he was like, a foolish question. Wow, so Hachimaru whips out like some turbo nas freaking whatever and starts and, and jets it for the car and actually headbutts Krillin this time. So it makes full contact and Krillin gets knocked into like a mountain or whatever. Carmine and them continues to drive off and then uh hito says as of now my goal is to give rise to the greatest androids the universe has ever known magenta says fantastic the red ribbon army will be back on top in no time and he's like hurrah and they both like do a little pose or whatever in the car meanwhile krillin, krillin is all beat up on the side of the road like some roadkill and they go incidentally a police officer was following us but i took care of them of the problem oh wow so he actually revealed it to to magenta that's interesting and he was like he didn't even notice of course krillin's like sergeant nuts i've lost him sorry she's like how could you krillin oh wow so time skip half a year later i think this happened in the movie too i can't remember if if months passed by since that moment they didn't make that very clear actually in the movie now that i think about it because in the movie after this scene they kind of just go right into this scene with pan and uh, piccolo training so it's half a year later this is six months after the three months all right so if we're keeping track here of all the all this time right so hito was in prison for three six months later we're training right so we're nine months after once the whole superhero prequel actually started so let's keep all that in mind all right piccolo says ready to call it a day and then she of course keeps rushing at him and then he hops over, she hops over piccolo and she goes in for a dynamic entry looking kick Hiya! and then uh piccolo like he sucks his teeth and then looks like she hits something she like must have fell, lost her moment, or she was going too hard, I don't know. Going through like a thing of rocks. She's like, owie. Pickle's like, you okay? She's like, yeah, I'm fine. And then Pickle's like, that's all for today. And she's like, okay. And then she reaches in, he's like, she's like, here, water. And Pickle's like, how thoughtful of you, Pan? Oh, okay, so this time they both drink the water. All right, nice. So they're, they're sipping on it. Pan's like, ah. And Pickle's like, I think you have more talent for this than your father. Well, let's not have that conversation. <laughs> Pan's like, but I want to learn how to shoot Kikoho Blast from my hands and stuff. Goten and Trunks can do that, you know? And then Pelicola says, like I've explained, you need to master the basics first. You can't even fly yet. She's like, yeah, well, it's hard. Pickle's like, of course it is. Go on and try. And she's like, okay. <laughs> and Pickle's like, don't force it. Will it? That'll give you control over your chi. And she's like, okay, but shh, let me try. She's like, she like calms down. Starting to get a little bit, you know, she gets a little bit off the toes or whatever. She's like, mm, almost had it. She's like, ah, nope, can't. And Pickle's like, well, no need to rush it. And then Pickle's like, you're only three. You got plenty of time. Plus, given your Saiyan genes, once you get it, you'll get it for good. And then she's like, um, Piccolo, I heard that daddy could be stronger than grandpa if he wanted to be. Is that true? <laughs> Here we go. Piccolo said, grandpa? Oh, Goku. <laughs> He really forgot Loki. Pickle's like, yeah, that's right. Well, maybe not right now. Definitely not right now. All right, I'll tell you that right now. Definitely not right now. In case y'all forgot. Pan's like, I've never seen daddy in a fight. And Pickle's like, only because there's no need. He'd fight if push came to shove. Pickle's like, can I take you home? And she's like, nah, I can go home alone. And he's like, sure. And she's like, bye-bye, Piccolo. And then she like runs off. And he's like, hmm. So she literally... Hops down the mountain. She's swinging through the trees. She's she's just charging straight forward. And Piccolo's like the next morning. So he's like doing his uh, meditation up on a rock, uh, elevated over his place. And he hears his phone vibrating from literally outdoors. So this scene also happened in the movies. And then he goes over, checks the phone, picks it up like he's L from Death Note. And he goes, what is it, Videl? And she goes, ah, good morning, Piccolo. Oh, you busy this afternoon? And he says, why? I'm always busy training. What do you need? And she's like, well, there's an attorney for the martial arts class I teach. So I'm wondering if you could pick up Pan from preschool. Piccolo's like, can't Gohan do it? 
And she's like, he's been shut away in his office for days, toiling away at a research report he's got to present soon. He's like, again? That idiot, I swear. She's like, please, Piccolo. He's like, fine. Thanks, you're the best. At one o'clock sharp then. And I'll be sure to buy you a tasty treat as thanks. And then Piccolo's like, I only drink water, no food. You know this. And then she's like, right, duh. Then how about another adorable plushie? Thanks a million. And beep, she hangs up. Hey, wait. And then they show this collection of all the dolls, of all the favors that he's probably done for them. Piccolo's like, why plushies? So then he steps outside and he's like, Burr. I really need to give him a piece of my mind. So he rushes right over to Gohan's house. So they go to Gohan's house. So this is straight up the movie. Again, overlap once more. Creatures on the window. It's like, oh, Piccolo. I heard Videl ask you to pick up Pan again. Thanks for helping out. And he goes, enough. What are you up to that's so important, huh? And Gohan's like, if you must know, my report on insects concerns a fascinating uh, formicade or uh, formicidae. Fine. I don't even know how to pronounce that. When these ants sense danger, they glow and transform. Like Super Saiya ants, you might say. And Piccolo's like, Forget your stupid Saiya ants. That's not the point. I'm asking you why this crap takes priority over picking up your kid. And then Gohan's like, Um, I mean, we've got you to help out, right, Piccolo? And then he's like, Ah. It's like, Would it kill you to train once in a while? Who knows when the next great evil will rise up? And Gohan's like, What? There's still evildoers out there? It goes like, besides, no matter the, the threat, we've got Dad and Vegeta. And then he tries to elbow Gohan. And actually, Gohan, he actually, he, he saw it coming. He goes, Gohan's like, hey, you didn't think I'd gotten that rusty, did you? And he gut checks him like the freaking shit that he is. And he's like, oh, he's like, oof. Piccolo's like, huh, you've been slacking. And he puts on the uh, weighted cape, goes right on him, and he falls over, of course, like just like in the movie. Gohan's like, oh, heavy. And Piccolo's like, I bet that outfit brings back memories. And then he's like, it might be hard to write my report like this. And Piccolo's like, stop whining. I agreed to pick up your daughter. He's like, thanks. you, Thank you. Seriously, we'll have to send you another plushie. Look at these damn plushies. Piccolo's like, I don't want another one. I've never said I like those fuzzy things. The nerve. And Gohan's like, oh, sure, he's grumpy. So he goes right back to his, his uh, training. This is probably where the part where Gamma 2 comes in. I'm sure. So Piccolo's like, darn, not there yet. Too many intrusive thoughts. Focus. Oh, yep. Just from the movie, he comes in, he, he peeks from the side, big explosion. Piccolo stands up and he's like, who dares interrupt my training? And there he is, Gamma 2. He whips up the gun, puts it down. He goes, King Piccolo, I assume. Piccolo says, sorry, I'm just regular Piccolo. He's like, I don't get it. He's like, look, it's a long story, but, but who are you meant to be? Some old timey hero? And he says, hmm. I prefer retro, if you don't mind. And I'm sorry to say, my true identity is a big secret. Oh, let's get it. But we know him as Gamma 2. And that's the chapter. All right, well, it is what it is. Uh, we, it is everything that we expected with a little, I wouldn't really call them surprises, but they were at least a little bit of new to with the with this overlapping i i would say because again there's this isn't gonna be completely one-to-one -one. we went over this in the full part podcast uh previously already so if you miss out on that obviously go check that out and subscribe if you haven't and make sure y'all are leaving the comment and hitting the bell for notifications as always even when you're doing that here because apparently i actually talked to youtube and they said that yeah um out of the 40,000 subscribers that you have only like about 9,000 of you guys actually have the the alerts on so do me a favor make sure you have the alerts on and if you don't have them on untick it and tick it again and if you're not subscribed please hit the subscribe button all of these chapters that are be coming out that's covering the superhero movie are not going to be one-to-one -one. they're going to have some differences to differentiate the two this is usually what happens and this is always what happens when it comes down to manga and anime there's not really a like a, a very true one-to-one -one. i mean there probably are a few anime out there that have true one-to-one -one adaptations but i bet you there's not as many as there are ones that have like you know more changes than not and even then a lot of those changes are more accepted by fans and i can tell you right now these changes that happen in this manga version are actually really good changes in a way it gives the movie a bit more uh substance in a way even though the movie obviously has a lot to offer and it brings a lot to the table but then the manga kind of takes what the movie did and they're like okay we're gonna add these little nuances here and these little bit of details there so that way the things that happened 
uh, make a little bit more sense because I actually do remember watching that part where in the beginning where they're talking to Hito in the car. I, I don't actually remember exactly what happened that caused the car to like spin around and around, but it, it was some sort of distraction. But obviously Krillin was not seen in any of those shots at all. So they decided to, I guess, involve him a little bit more in the overall plot, which I do appreciate because like them involving him in the movie, he didn't, it didn't really seem like it, he made that much of a difference or mattered all that much, but he has more of a presence here in this manga version, which is kind of cool to, you know, give him something. And of course I am enjoying the interaction between Pan and Piccolo. I look forward to seeing what Pan does or how she does what we know she, what she does in, in from the movie. And considering that this chapter basically covered some material that was still prequel to when the movie officially starts, when the movie starts, and then while the movie is going on, I would say and guess that, yeah, I feel like this is going to be done by like the, the June chapter. So uh, we'd have, we have April next, which is, I believe, April 20th or 21st, and then May. So realistically, the May chapter should actually be where all of this is like done will it be though is another question entirely but i'm sure like always we will talk about this in more detail get you guys um or get the opinions and thoughts and takes of the rest of the full power podcast uh cast and if you haven't already please like i said earlier please go ahead and subscribe to us over there uh, we're about to hit our 100th episode at the time of uh, this video so that's definitely exciting but it'll be episode 99 where we talk about this chapter and probably going back to talking about more Budokai Tenkaichi 4 hype realistically. But I'll turn it over to you guys in the comments. Please let me know what you guys thought about this. What you're looking forward to from this arc. And you know what? Let's really get the conversation going. What are we seeing after this? And I know I've asked this already, but I'm going to ask it again. Because this is what we need to figure out. And this is what we need to know. So for by any shot in the dark chance that someone from Toei is watching this. Listen, we need... End of Z to happen already, please. Stop stalling. We need to get it going. Like, share, subscribe, hit me up. All the links in the description are many ways in which you can support this channel. And again, make sure you are making sure you have the alerts on. Um, so that way you guys get notified. Because funny enough, there are some of you, and I get this like, like, like often enough to where I'm going to be obviously bringing this up on, on this video. There's so many people that are sub to this channel, but no one knows that I'm still making videos. And that, that to me is like, it hurts, but it is crazy, but it happens. It, it is, it, this is the nature of content creation. So again, I haven't left. I've still been here and I'm not planning on leaving anytime soon. So make sure you guys take care of yourselves. May the power protect. Keep the lot right here on this channel. Stay safe, stay clean and stay the hell inside. And I'll see you guys next time.